Hi, everyone. Welcome to Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast, where I share lesson ideas, songs, games, and inspiring things for your elementary music classroom. My name is David Rao, and I am the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. This episode of the podcast is a replay containing the audio version of a Musical Mondays live video. If you're not familiar with Musical Mondays, every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I go live on Facebook and Instagram to share about the lessons that I'm using in class with my students. I give a recap of my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then do a deep dive about one grade level and share the books, instruments, songs, and process that I use to teach the lesson to kids. This podcast episode contains all the audio from the Musical Mondays video, but if you'd like to see a replay of the video itself, you can find a link to the archived video on YouTube when you click the link in the notes for this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Here's the show. Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Instagram, on Facebook, on Pinterest, Twitter, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, This week is a little bit of a different week for me. Usually in these live videos, I share all my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons for the week. I do a deep dive and share a little bit about one of those grade levels and talk you through the process and resources and everything that I use in my lessons that week. Well, I shared about all my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons in last week's video. Um, I didn't finish that rotation. I'm still teaching those lessons. Well, I would be teaching those lessons, but actually... Uh, My school's on this uh, thing called a balanced calendar, so I start August 1st with students, and I have students until the end of May, and so um, that means that about every six or seven weeks, we get a full week off. So we get a week off in September, one um, for Thanksgiving, a full week for Thanksgiving, um, this week in February, and then a week off in April. So I don't have students this week, and even if I did, I would be teaching them the things that I was that I shared with you last week, so it feels redundant to share those things again. So instead, I've decided that today um, I would just take a day and talk about substitute teacher planning. Ooh, sorry, I knocked over my video here. Um, and talk about substitute teacher planning because um, I've been sharing about that on Instagram. I've been doing stories every day um, about um, lesson planning, things you can do. But that's tricky because uh, those stories are only like 15 seconds long. And so a lot of people will miss things or they get jumbled up or confusing. So I figured I would just take um, a video here, um, a week here to share about um, how I put together all those plans, how I organize the technology, um, some of the actual samples of the plans um, and all that sort of stuff because I feel like it's something that we all struggle with even people who have been teaching a long long time and so why not talk about that and get some of those um, ideas and share some of those ideas so that's that's my plan Um, really quick if you have any questions along the way um, I have tried all the things that I know I'm going to talk about I have tried to track them down and put links on my links page if you go to makemomentsmatter.org slash video um, you can find the links for the the 2019-2020 2019-2020 Musical Mondays videos, and um, or you can just, if you're on Instagram, you can look at my, my LinkedIn profile, or if you're on Facebook, you can scroll down to the bottom of the caption for this video, and there's a link that will take you there. And hopefully, if I'm able to find all of those things, I'll put links there. If, I do, if there's one particular thing that you're like, hey, what was that? I will look it up and track it down and try and find that for you if I haven't already put that on the links page. Or you can always join my Facebook group, Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. And if you have questions, you can post them there. And it's fun to have a little dialogue there so that it's not just like, hey, you know, I watch this video or I listen to this podcast or whatever and hear these ideas, but more like let's have a community conversation and talk about this stuff. So that's Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Um, If you join that, we can chat and share more ideas as the week goes by. Okay, so before I get to substitute lesson plans, one more thing that I've been doing every week, I've been trying to talk about bulletin boards and give you one more idea for bulletin boards because I feel like that's another thing that stresses people out and it it doesn't need to, Um, but it's something that we're always sort of working on and always sort of some, you know, in the back burner, I guess. But I wanted to share more ideas about bulletin boards and how you can use those to your advantage. Um, One of the things that I learned in the first couple years of teaching was my admin, my school community, they don't know what I do in the classroom. They don't. They just, and it's it's not their fault. I've realized that it's it's my job to teach other teachers, to teach my students, to teach my faculty, to teach um, 
admin and parents and whoever comes in the building. It's my job to teach them what we do in music. Um, there's one time where my principal was like, oh, wait, there are national standards for music education. I was like, yes. Well, I mean, that's not how I said it, but I wanted to be like, yes, of course. And why don't you know that? You're my principal. But it, it wasn't that she was being mean about it. She just didn't know. And so um, I always try and sneak in the national standards every year somewhere on my bulletin boards. I always try and share that out with the community. And this is one way that I do that. Um, one year, um, our school theme was soaring higher. And everyone was encouraged to come up with a bulletin board or an idea or a, a something um, to display to show off soaring higher. And it was this very vague of like airplane, eagle, I don't know. My school at that point were the falcons. So was, a lot of people did like birds out in the hallway or whatever. Well, um, I decided to go for um, a hot air balloon theme. And so what I did was I took these fun um, hot air balloon clip arts. And on top of them, I wrote the national standards in we can for format. So we improvise melodies, variations and accompaniments. We play on instruments alone and with others. We sing alone and with others. Um, we evaluate music and musical performances. So each one of these hot air balloons, it's like floating out on the wall, um, carries one of the things that we do in music and, and talks about one of those standards. And if you're like, that's cool, but I don't want to have to cut around those, those hot air balloons. I just want to print it and put it out there. <laughs> um, I have another version that's sort of square with a little background. We read and notate music. And then the bottom has the focus word read. Um, I had a lot of English language learners, so they encouraged us to pop out the word, the main word as often as possible. We evaluate music and music performances, evaluate. And so at the bottom of the poster, it has that, that hook word, and then it, um, it has the sentence as well. So th this is just one way um, I took our standards. I took the, the, the concepts and things that we were learning and put them out for parents to see. It was bright and colorful. Kids like to see them. Oh, and then because, of course, the header, right? So... Um, I don't know what got on these. Um, so I found this little clip art of an airplane and here's a little line coming out of the back of the airplane because it connects to um, these like banners. Like maybe it's like a banner plane. So it's like soaring higher. <laughs> these little flags holding the words. And of course I have another little airplane for soaring, one for higher. And then um, a couple little clouds that say like in music. So there's actually we are, I don't know where the we went, but um, so the, the whole thing when it puts together, there's the airplane that says like, we're soaring higher in music and then the hot air balloons. And if I wanted, I could do the square version, but, but all that to say like, this is just basically like the I cans. This is the, the national standards and I just put it out on fun clip art and, and made it more exciting. So um, that's in my teacher's pay teacher store if you want it, but take the idea and, and, and use that to your advantage. Um, also on the links page, I put a link. I did a blog post all about I can statements and, and how you can um, display this in fun ways. And so um, click that, click that and, and, and find ways to share that information out with more people because the more they know about what we actually do in our classrooms, the better we can advocate for what we do. Because if they don't know like, oh, why do you want instruments? Well, we play instruments a lot. Oh, really? Like the, the more that it's in their heads, like we play, we move, we dance, we evaluate, we think critically, you know, the more that we can do that, the more uh, people will understand why what we do is so important. So um, that was just a fun hot air balloon version of it and it matched with my school theme, but it's just a way to connect and help people understand what we do in the music room every day. Okay, so substitute teacher planning. Let's jump in. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to, to, to substitute teacher planning and it's tricky. Um, I like to say, like to say, um, a substitute teacher, the substitute teacher pool is like a box of chocolates. You never know who you're going to get, or, you know, you never know if like you open up the box and there's nothing inside because the sub is canceled at the last second, or you never know if like you're about to have some chocolate and then your admin is like, Oh wait, no, that's for the second grade team. You don't get that chocolate. You I mean, you don't get that sub. So it's, I mean, you never, you never, never, never know what's going to happen with a substitute teacher. And so I personally take the idea of like, well, plan for all contingencies. Just do whatever you can, plan lots of ideas. And it is 
frustrating because we put a lot of time and thought into these plans and sometimes the sub just ignores them and does whatever. And and I've I've also learned after many attempts at planning for subs, sometimes they're just going to do that and you just have to like okay, well I won't re I won't request that sub again or um you know or we'll have a chat about it or whatever or I'm not going to worry about it because I had to be at the doctor that day anyway, so I, you know, whatever. <laughs> but um, I'm, I make lots and lots of options for my subs so that then they get some choices, and I'll share about that in just a minute. I wanted to share a little bit about organization and planning and where do you get these resources um, so that when we get into some of those actual lesson plans, we've covered some of the organizational things. So um, years ago, it was like I was starting to, when I was first starting to teaching, I was like, where do I get these ideas? I went on Pinterest. I went on YouTube, I went on Teachers Pay Teachers, I went all over and I started gathering stuff. But then like, what do you do with that? Because in the moment when you need a sub, you don't wanna to have to like go searching through your hard drive or wait, is it on the share drive or is it on my external drive or did I print it out? Or like, is it in that folder? Where did I put that? So I eventually, after a couple of years of doing this, bought um, a sub tub. Well, actually, here's what I bought, I'll show you. Um, I bought this little, box right the sterlite container and i thought like great that's gonna be so perfect um and i put in this little thing that said music sub ideas and extras perfect right but then i got to have more and more and more things and more ideas and more stuff and then i had to upgrade so <laughs> then i got um this huge box sub tub and then I got so much stuff that I had to have two boxes so this one is K1 and 2 and I have another box just like it for 3, 4, and 5 and these boxes are not like where I put the materials that I want subs to just take and go. This is where all of my resources go and so um, I actually have the two big boxes plus the spillover box plus you know there's digital stuff but the the whole point of it is so that when I need to pull sub resources I have them already here. And I sort of, I separate them into K1 and 2 and 3, 4, and 5 because I feel like there are some things that fit better for primary and some that fit better for secondary. And so I just sort of separate them out, even though some of the resources, like maybe a lesson you use for second grade, you'd always use for third grade, I don't know. But um, I separate them out by grade level in the boxes so that when it's time, I can pull and use or pull and rethink or, or whatever. And so that's where all of the stuff goes. And I'll get into those in just a minute. Also... Um, I keep, um, well, I have a couple binders. So the first binder, this is the one I leave for the sub. It says very clearly, Woodstock Elementary Music Substitute Folder. <laughs> so inside, and, and this was something that, um, in my first school teaching, they were like, you must have a red binder. Where is your red binder? And I was like, is this like, like a literal red binder? Are we talking about like 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 an, the idea of the red binder and they're like no literally a red binder with all your sub stuff and so um i bought this red binder and i put you know the thing and then inside um i have emergency information so this was the protocol that we used um and it had lockdown lockout evacu evacuate shelter in case there was you know um, in case we had an emergency, I wanted them to be able to do that. I used to write out a like a letter of like, if there's a fire, if there's a tornado, if there's whatever, do this, if there's whatever, do this. But I found out that the sub never read those, so I stopped doing that. But I put this in the front, and then in the back I have the obligatory like, I don't know if your school does this, but like we have, we're supposed to have construction paper green for everything's okay and red for not everything's okay. And so I have that in the back of the folder too just in case like they need that in case there's an emergency situation that's hap they've done drills before where they don't announce and so I have to have all this ready and then um, each one of these so I have a seven day rotation so I have seven tabs here um, and there's a little sticky note that says seating charts and rosters if you want them I can't show those to you because it's my students personal information but I have for each of the like rotation days I have my seating chart with student pictures um, it took me a while to create those um, when I was doing setting up my year on iDokio, that iPad app that I've shared about before that I talk about that I use for attendance. I can actually print those attendance views out. So I just printed everything out from the, the daily iPad app that I use and then I put it into a binder so that if the sub needed to go through, they can see the seating chart, they know the kids, they've got all the names. And that has been a lifesaver for... Um, 
for, for planning for a sub so they have all that information. So that goes into the red binder and then on the back is my schedule, my class schedule with the seven days and the teachers and whatever. This is sort of like for a sub so they have and can take this. It has rosters and faces and pictures and all that sort of stuff. Um, so if they ever need it in an emergency situation. Another thing I leave for a sub that the sub would see, because they would see like my piles of like lesson plans, they would see the binder and they'd see a couple other things. But like they don't see the sub tub. They don't they don't peruse through there. I don't want them in that. But um, another thing I leave for a sub is this, a substitute report. And this has been really interesting. It's gotten me a lot of great information. So what's on the report it says, uh, name of substitute and sub number in case I wanted to request them again, their email and phone number. And then it says, please just leave some quick notes about lesson plans. If you followed my plans, let me know what worked and what didn't. If you deviated from the plans, please let me know what you did instead. And then, um, so there's one little box for each grade level. And then it also says, next time I would appreciate the following. And it's good because sometimes I'll say like, you didn't leave out the CD or uh, this went way slower than you thought it might. So we didn't get, we only got halfway through it or whatever, but it's good to know that just to like know where the kids are once they leave the room. Then on the back, it says discipline or behavior issues and it has a bunch of little boxes. So name, grade, teacher, and then disrespectful, didn't follow the rules, disruptive, off task, etc. So it's just a really quick way for a sub to leave that information so I can follow up later. And then it says, leave the names of any students and their teacher's name who are particularly helpful or should be rewarded or use this space to leave me any other notes. And then my favorite part at the very bottom, it says, there's a little checkbox. I know all this is backwards because I'm using my FaceTime camera. I'm so sorry. But um, it says, I a uh, little checkbox that says, I am a quote, music person comfortable teaching musical content, singing, et cetera. And then a box, I am not a music person and prefer videos or worksheets. That just helps me plan for the next time that that person comes to my room. Or if, um, if you're in a very small city school area where you get the same subs over and over and over, and you know, like you're, you're going to have this person again, it's good to have that data. So then you could plan accordingly. So um, this substitute teacher report, it's free. It's in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. Um, and it's, like I said, it just gives me data about what happened that day and lets me, it gives the sub a way to give me more information. And sometimes they'll just write directly onto the plans I leave. That's great too. And in fact, I have a second binder. So this is a binder that only I see. I do not leave this for the sub. But um, when I first started collecting sub plans, I thought I'll just take all the worksheets and I'll put them sort of in one place. Well, so that's what this binder was originally for. Um, and so I have like some coloring sheets and some whatever, but, and then it, it, it ended up going into the sub tub instead. So I don't really use this for that, but I do have an entire huge part that says oh, old sub plans. I keep all of my plans for as long as I've been teaching because you never know when you're going to want to go back and steal that idea you had or whether you're going to try something you've done but not for a couple of years and you want to remember like how did that go and so if ever i leave plans um i keep them so like this one is like plans that have been notated by the sub nope didn't do that did do this technical difficulty plan b worked or whatever um borrowed a borrowed something from someone else like who knows? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, here's a great one. Um, one of our amazing subs, Mrs. Epstein, she wrote down all the things. I love the video. I played it so that, uh, twice so that the kids had extra time to watch or because um, they wanted to see again. They missed things the first time or um, all according to plans left. All went well. I love that. I love hearing that from a sub. Um, class really enjoyed seeing the different versions of the song. Beyonce was the favorite. So like it's fun to see some of those things um, given back to me with, with ideas. And so um, the, that's really nice to, to keep all of that so that you ne so you can go back so the next time you do it. The other reason that I keep this is I'm on a seven day rotation. So if I'm out one day in August, maybe the day that, that I miss that day is like day two. Well, then if I miss again in like November, Maybe the day I missed that time is day four. That means I can take my lesson plans from August and just reuse them. Because day four kids haven't seen those lessons, but day two kids have. So I keep all these lessons and I write what day of the rotation 
came that day when I was out so that then if if it's a class where I can just rinse and repeat, then I just rinse and repeat. So I'm not reusing the lesson. So I'm not making new lessons every single time, if that makes sense. Because if I have a seven day rotation, I can use my first, my first set of plans for each of those days in the rotation. And then if I, like if I, but like if there's a time where like the first time I missed, it was a day two, and then I miss again, and it's, it happens to be another day two, well then I need to come up with new plans. If that makes sense. And so in the back, I also will, will make a little tally and I'll say like sub plans lesson one, set one, and I'll write like day seven and the date that I use those plans. And then like the next time I use those plans, day three in the rotation I used on 10, 15, 2019 or whatever so that I can um, go through and just quickly, quickly remember what I did. Okay. Let me get a couple comments and questions here before I move on. Work smarter, not harder. Yes, that's what I'm trying to do by saving these plans. Um, let's see. I usually put a post on my sub activities where I can write down which classes have done which activities. Super smart. I actually, on on the sub plans that I print out and leave for sub, I just mark on it with a marker because I like it. they're not going to need it again, so I'll just write on that. I have made my sub plans like the emergency flip charts you see by doors in a classroom. All the sub basics are there as well as favorite singing games. Totally sold the idea from Pinterest. That's a cool idea. I'm going to have to check more into that. Okay, so two binders, the one that I keep for myself for like holding on to all those old sub plans and then the binder that I show to, that I give to subs with seating charts plans, a sub report, um, and all that of emergency information in case they need it for whatever reason. <clears throat> okay, that's a little bit about the, the just organization stuff I like leave on the desk. Let me open up, crack open one of these tubs. I'm gonna start with K12 um, and just share a few things out of here and sort of how I um, I plan all this stuff. Oh, yeah, one more thing. So on the top of, well, like a lot of times on my plans, I'll leave um, like a YouTube video link that they would watch and then we have to, then the, the group can talk about or you can evaluate or there's a worksheet companion with it or whatever. Um, you never know with technology, so so sometimes I'll have a DVD, sometimes I'll have a video on YouTube, sometimes I'll do CDs or whatever, depending on what you have in your classroom. I'm able to leave my teacher iPad, or sorry, my teacher laptop for the sub. Um, I sign out of it, it's not my account or anything that they see, but um, they, there, so there's a laptop there for them to use. I've not always had that option. Sometimes there are desktops that um, subs can use sometimes not sometimes they sometimes a sub has their own laptop I mean every district is different right I'm lucky that I can leave my teacher laptop there and so what I do is if I ever have a YouTube video that I want them to show I put that in the notes and then I wrote right on the top of the notes and I highlight it there is a digital copy of these notes on the sub teacher um, flash drive and so here in a little Ziploc bag it says substitute teacher flash drive um, and then the flash drive they can just plug into my computer because I, I tried one time like making a Word document with all these links and cool stuff and like emailing it to that person it didn't make it or they had troubles downloading or I don't know so I just put it on a, on a flash drive and on the flash drive I also have backup copies of any of the worksheets that I'm leaving um, I have if they're digital presentations I want them to do they're on the flash drive basically anything that's digital that I think that would help the sub I put on the flash drive and I leave right on top of the binder for them to use so that's been super helpful like I said some and, and then if they have a digital copy of the Word document where you wrote out all their notes if you put the like YouTube link there then they can click it on the digital copy and it'll just take it take them to YouTube instead of them having to like try and type it into a, a browser while the class like implodes right so leaving that digital copy has been really really great for most of my subs and so I, I try and do that as much as I can Let's see, so, okay, so sub flash drive. I'm gonna set that aside and not lose that. Then if I have like piles of stuff that I want the sub to do, I have little post-its that I put on each one. Okay, one, two is somewhere, but, but it's on each pile so they can just grab and do and put back or grab and do it. So they're not like sifting through, sorting through. There's not a lot of time 
for subs. They got, <laughs> got to get right to it. So I want them to not have any trouble finding stuff. So I'm constantly going back and like looking through sub plans. Like, did I make sure that I was clear about where that was? And I always try and put like, if they need markers, markers are on the brown wooden shelves near the door, second shelf or whatever. And hopefully they're there because <laughs> I want them to be able to find stuff. Because some of the times, I feel like if a sub has to like, wander around the room looking for resources for more than like 10 seconds they'll just ditch it and change to whatever they want to do instead so I try and make it really clear for them like I put a post-it on it or I put the flash driver I try and make you know like I highlight things so they can find stuff easily um so that they you know when they're pressed in the moment they have a class waiting that they're not stressed out trying to find stuff if that makes sense Okay, so I'm gonna go through my K12 box and I'm gonna share some of my like backup stuff and then some of my lesson ideas and I'll do the same for three, four, and five. We are doing great with time. So like I said at the beginning of the video, whenever I leave plans for a sub, I leave like option one, option two, option three, option four, option five, because I want them to like, I, I want them to engage with something musical and I want them to um, teach to the students, but I know that some people like, they don't wanna sing or they don't want to pull out an instrument or they, if they they'll read a book but they won't sing along with it or you know like every sub is different and as much as I want to say like well if they're not going to sing then don't hire them well like but yeah but I need to be gone sometimes so like like I got to go to the dentist so like if I keep saying like well if they're not going to sing don't hire them then maybe they won't have a sub for my class and then that puts pressure on my teammates so anyway if, if the sub doesn't want to sing Fine. Then I have backup number two, three, four, and five, so that they have options um, when we go. So a couple of those options. Um, I love leaving books for subs because there are some subs who are like, mm, I don't really want to teach music, but I'll read a book. Sure. So like, um, I'm a little teapot. There are a lot of fun like song books you can leave. This is an Isa Trapani book, um, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I love this version of it. This is by Jane Cabrera. It's a really fun version of it. Um, cause it not just, it involves little animal families. It's the cutest little book. Anyway. Um, okay. So there's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I'm a little teapot. Let's see. Oh, obviously Baby Shark, right? Cause you gotta leave that one. Um, so there are some really fun books that you can leave that are just based on songs. In fact, um, on the links page, I put a link to, I have an Amazon like ideas list where I can just, is if I find a book that's new, I can just plug it there and put it in on that huge list. And there's a whole list of books based on songs that you can check out if you're interested. Um, you don't have to buy them on Amazon. You can go buy them from a discount book webs, website or whatever, or find them at your library or, I mean, you can get them anywhere, but the nice thing about Amazon is almost every book in like the history of books is listed on Amazon. So I can at least link it to the listing. So then if you wanna go look at the ISBN, um, or if you want to pull up more information about the author, you can do that on Amazon. So you don't have to buy on Amazon if you don't want, but you can if you do. So, okay, so books are in there. Um, let's see. I've got some other books that are really great. Um, I'm going to share more about John Lithgow later, but um, basically anything by John Lithgow that he's written. He's an actor, um, but he's also written some children's books. And a lot of times they'll come with like a CD, often of him reading the book. And it, usually there are musical elements to it, so he'll either sing along or there'll be some sort of track that goes with it. So um, that's really cool, so I like putting those in there. Some of my favorite books are by Eric Litwin. He wrote Pete the Cat, and he has this whole book series called Groovy Joe. There's Groovy Joe Dance Party Countdown. There's Groovy Joe Ice Cream and Dinosaurs. And each of these books, because he was a teacher who gets it, um, he, he before he became like a famous author because of Pete the Cat, he was a, a really good teacher and a good teacher um, of English or ELA, English language arts or whatever. So he, these books are really great for kids who are beginning to read. They're great for ki uh, for teachers who want to leave them for a variety of reasons. So one of the things he included is it says download free songs. Download the song and story. He has recorded himself reading his own books and there are songs for the books and he's recorded himself with like professional guitar and drums and whatever, a little song to go with it. So if you get these books, you can download um, the recordings for free. And then even if the sub is like, I'm not going to read that, you can say, great, just flip the page and press play and he will read it for you and do the singing for you. So it's um, a really fun resource to have in there. Um, and those are Groovy Joe by Eric Litwin, but he's also done Pete the Cat, he's done um, The Nut Family, some just lots of fun books. 
If you um, have recently done something seasonal, if you've done um, like Thanksgiving or, or Halloween or whatever, and you read books in class, take those books and put them in your sub plan. So Over the River and Through the Woods, after I finished doing that, I put that in my sub tub. Here's another version of Over the River. So that's fun too. If you did one version of the book, but have a different version, um, you can put that in and the kids can compare and contrast. That's super fun. Let's see. Um, this is another one, Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving. So this is a fun, um, it's just another fun chance for you to take books that you've done in class or that are tangential, like linked to books you've done in class and put them in the box, put them in the sub plans. So like I said, if we did the version of Over the River and Through the Woods, then maybe I'd put this one in the box and kids can see how it's different. It's really easy to do that with uh, these books. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. Well, there there were a thousand million copies of that book. Um, and so I put in, you know, well, Valentine's Day, guess what? She swallowed a rose. Okay, and then there's this one. There was a bold lady, who, a bold lady who wanted a star. Um, I know an old lady who swallowed a pie. You can go on forever and ever and ever. In fact, I have a whole page on that Amazon list just dedicated to old lady who swallowed whatever seasonal thing that you want her to swallow for that story. Uh, a pie, a rose, an egg, a bird, a bell, I don't know, there are lots of things. And so those are fun books to put in your sub tub because if you've already done that lesson once, then you can just keep reusing that one forever and ever and ever and kids will still like it for the most part. Okay, so books are a great thing to put in your sub tub as a backup. The ultimate forever backup for subs is let me just play a movie and so but I feel like the subs always are wanting to do that like mm, what's a DVD I could show not all subs I've got some really good subs who actually want to do lessons but there are some subs who just want to do that so in my K1 and 2 box um, I have some backup DVD options um, and again DVDs are nice because then they can like roll in the TV from the library or they can borrow a laptop or whatever and play them so um, Sesame Street Sings. These are so cheapo at Walmart, but like kids generally like them. And for the most part, they're pretty good songs um, because they're like educational and they're fun and they're PBS. So um, I have that as an option that's like, don't play the whole thing, but play part of it, whatever. Um, another great one a la PBS is this, um, Reading Rainbow, Music Music Everywhere. Um, so this is Reading Rainbow, the the TV shows where they pull out lessons that are musical. So they've got Zin Zin Violin and they've got Hip Cat. Um, so they're two really fun books, but they have um, like along with it. So with Hip Cat, um, they also talk about improvisation and music, literature, art and dance. Mm -hmm. um, and then they interview Joshua Redman, who's a jazz saxophonist. He talks about his life in music for Hip Cat. And then for Zin Zin a Violin, um, they talk about the Ju they learn about the Juilliard School of Music and they meet the cast of Stomp along with all these things. And then it says there's also bonus segments from other Reading Rainbow episodes, Berlioz the Bear, Ty's One Man Band, Barn Dance, Mama Don't Allow, Borragita and the Coyote, and more. It's a really cool uh, DVD if you can find it and I'll try and track down a link for it. I don't know if I found that one online, but I found, I think I got that one through like a DVD swap or found it somehow randomly online, but it's a, it's a cool book to have. Okay. Let's see. Uh, the Biscuit Brothers. This is another one that was given to me. Um, this was a PBS show, I think. Yep. Okay. So this one has, uh, so this DVD has three full episodes from season two. So there are multiple episodes. This one has dynamics, tempo, and conduct yourself along with a sing-along episode of Best of the Symphony Barn and all 12 installments of Instrument of the Day. So super, super musical, f funny cowboy themed, um, but this is volume two. So there's a volume one out there somewhere. But again, this was one that like, I think a retiring teacher gave to me and I was like, nah, I don't know. And then I put it in the sub resources and I watched it, watched it. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. Because kids are all about it they like watching it they think it's a little silly but they also are learning as they do that and then my favorite all-time for k1 and 2 dvd is this one jill trinka jill trinka is an amazing 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 teacher um and so this one this 
DVD is basically she went to um, the Bass Hall, Bass Hall Children's Concert in Fort, Fort Worth, Texas. She went to do this special concert for kids. They videotaped it. And so what your kids do when they watch it is they basically become part of that kid audience that is watching and participating along. So anytime she, Jill says like, sing along, they can sing along. Or if she's like, hmm, what's happening? Kids will start answering in your class. So like I've seen this happen. It really does happen. Um, but it's super fun and in the like 50 minutes that this happens, she does a greeting, a vocal warm up. She does a couple songs. She does, um, she plays the dulcimer, the banjo. She pl I think she, yeah, the auto harp. Um, so like lots of fun little songs in here and she's just a really great teacher. She's a Kodai teacher. And so like, you're going to get a lot of really good stuff in here. Okay. Super good DVD, but that's not just like, they're not just like watching Enchanted. Like they're actually like learning and doing stuff. So that's really cool. Okay. Let me jump into some other things that I put in here. Um, and as you're searching for like sub ideas, I know sort of like, ugh, what am I going to do? There's a book in the secondary uh, box that I'll show you in a second, but there's this book called Help, I'm a Substitute Music Teacher. This is by Cheryl Lavender, who became famous in my heart for the for uh, Instrument Bingo. Instrument Bingo, lovely. Um, so but Cheryl Lavender wrote this other book called Help, I'm a Substitute Music Teacher. And some of these things I think are maybe a little bit too hard, or maybe it would be good if you had like a long-term sub who is musically inclined, or whatever, but this is a, a super fun resource to pull things from, because even if you're like, mm, I don't know about this one or two lesson, it's just like page after page of things that you can borrow and steal and use. And um, it's pretty simple, um, the, the lesson ideas and the things that they do. Um, it does give a sequence for the teacher. It gives option for variation. It gives the rationale and then a possible grade level. And I like that she says like K through two, or like K through three, because I feel like a lot of times I'll share a lesson and people will be like, David, why didn't you tell me what grade to do that with? I'm like, well, I don't know. It depends on your students because like I see students once every seven school days and some of you see them every day. So what I can do a second grade, you probably are doing in like first grade because you can go faster. So I like that, that she leaves like a sequence of like K through two, depending on what your kids can do. You, you get to decide whether that's appropriate or not. So um, that's a fun one from Cheryl Lavender. Help, I'm a substitute music teacher. Um, there's another book that I'm gonna pull out a little bit later, but um, this one, um, if you've ever used Activate Magazine, magazine, journal, I don't, it's not a journal, at magazine, um, Activate is super fun and, it, and you can get, I think, a subscription for it, I'm pretty sure. Um, but it has tons of little lessons and songs and things. And again, like, I don't know that you could use every single thing in this for a substitute. You could use a lot of these lessons for your own classroom, but sometimes they'll include, um, like worksheets or, um, research pages, things like that, that maybe you do some of it in class and then you leave the worksheet for the sub to do as a follow-up or, um, you know, you have part of the lesson that the sub can teach and then there's an extension you'll do later. But the cool stuff about this, is it gives you lots of ideas. So if you are able to get like, this was something that when a teacher retired, they were like, Hey, do you want a couple of years of this? And I was like, yeah. So um, even though it says like April 2012, I can still pull ideas from here and, and use them. So those go in the sub tub so that I can pull out and use them as needed, um, depending on what my kids are going to do. Okay. K1 and 2, I think, is really hard. And K1, K, K and 1 especially, a lot of those lessons are watch a movement video like a go noodle or something like that um, and move and play with that. Um, read a book that you can sing along with or find a book, someone reading a book on YouTube. Um, and then kids move as much as possible, do fun little songs and games and things. And then one thing I always try to include is let them color because the subs like, oh, I've done all these things. Now what? Well, Kids like to color, and so um, I have some coloring pages, and they don't get to do that normally in my classroom. I just don't, there's no time, so um, I leave. These are from Melody Payne, and I linked her on my links page. But um, they're just instruments, um, so like tambourine or clarinet, or I'm looking at these backwards. So that's not an oboe. Can't really quite see flute. Um, 
conductor. <laughs> so they get to go through and can color. And if you've done a, like a video or a story about instruments, then this is super perfect. They can just go in and color and have fun with that and then take it with you. Like, don't leave it here. Like, take it with you. Um, another one that I made, and I actually made this as like a bulletin board set. Um, and then I realized, well, why not do a black and white version and also use it for coloring pages? So it's instruments playing, uh, or sorry, animals playing instruments. So the alligator playing the accordion, or the dog playing the drum, or the fox playing the flute. So kids love going through and coloring and choosing an animal or choosing it by the instrument or whatever. And they love going through and doing that. So I linked that on the links page too. But it, sh it originally, like I said, I made this as like a like an instrument alphabet to go up above your board and then realized like, why not just print it in black and white and have kids colored in? So that's also what I use it for. But I make coloring sheets are really great. Um, you can have the sub play music while they color. You could just let them color. But letting them do that and experience and see the instruments, I think that's worthwhile. So, um, and it's something that the sub can absolutely handle. Oh, they're coloring. Cool, I can do that. <laughs> um, I think the more intricate you get with sub plans, the more the sub is like, I don't know if I can do this. Um, so especially if you have like, play this video, watch this thing, learn about these instruments, play Hip Cat, the Reading Rainbow version, and then color in some coloring pages. The sub's like, mm, yeah, I can do that. Okay, let's see if there's anything. Oh, this is another time where we had just done the Nutcracker, and so I found some like Nutcracker coloring pages. Oh no, the rat came. Uh, and so then the kids got to color that. And we didn't use all the coloring pages, so I didn't just recycle them. I just put them in the sub tub so the next year, if you know that rolls around where I'm gone because every year um, my chorus tour is like the month of December and I know I'm gonna be gone every year during that one day in Mar or one day in December well then I'm gonna keep any extra nutcracker coloring pages I have because I know I'm gonna use them next year okay let's see what else is in here um, another great lesson that I love using for um, K1 and 2 is I know a shy fellow who swallowed a cello Super fun little story. Basically, there was an old lady who swallowed a fly, only it's um, it's music themed. And so I, lo I love using that one. Um, and it's great to just put in here and use, especially if they've used um, was an old lady who swallowed a fly and they've already done that and like, I'm bored with that. Well then, there's another cool version of that. Lindsay Francis, good coloring resource for music in motion, Carnival the Animals resource. Cool, I, don't, I haven't seen that one yet. Or I bet you could probably find one I'm not familiar with Music in Motion so much. You could probably find one on Teachers Pay Teachers if you buy a kit with that. That's why I got the one from Melody Payne. Um, I think she has one that's like orchestral instruments and then another one for folk instruments and another one for some other kind. So I just bought the bundle and now I have all those coloring sheets to use for whatever. But I love the idea of Carnival of the Animals. I have a book that could go with that. So I'll have to track that one down, Lindsay. Um, so speaking of Teachers Pay Teachers, I pull a lot of great stuff from the website to use. Um, and so one of my favorites um, recently from Aileen Miracle, um, she has this in like her singing with a sub or some, something substitute. If you go to her store, Aileen Miracle, Mrs. Miracle's Music Room, and you look up her substitute teacher stuff, you'll find lots of great things. But I love her little statues lesson, and this is in one of her bundles. But the fun thing is that it has the objectives, the standards, the materials, and then a nice, easy checklist process for the uh, substitute to do. So basically, I think it's a, like music, and then once the music stops, they have to make a statue, so you show them the statue to make. Um, and then there are lots of things. And then the kids, could, there's a worksheet where they can make their own statues. That's super fun. My last sub who did this took pictures during the lesson and sent them to me of the kids and the statues they created. Hilarious. And the, the great thing is that then that's a chance for kids to improvise and create. They're moving. They're listening to music. They're, I mean, there, there are so many things that that hits. And it's just a super great, great lesson. That's from Alien Miracle. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me keep going here. Oh, another one from Alien Miracle, my favorite piece of music. This one has like music that they listen to and then they get to describe which one is their favorite thing and why. This is great if you have to incorporate writing standards in there. Um, Alien has a lot of great resources that I take and I pull and I use for, um, for subs. And especially, like I said, because she gives like a, a read out of like first this, then this, then this, then this, especially for subs who have trouble, um, like, you know, like, I don't know how to teach that. Well, then this gives them a step-by-step -step and it's musically themed, so I love that. Let's see, let's see. Let me pause a second right here. 
So, and the other thing is I have these just there in hanging folders in my sub tub. So I can just pull out, whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, yep, not gonna use that. Gonna use that, I don't know, maybe. In this. Let's see. Oh, this is another one. In second grade, I like doing Carnival of the Animals for second grade. So I actually mix a couple things in. Um, Sarah Bybee has a really fantastic PowerPoint um, that I use as sort of a preview um, that, that goes through each of the animals and, and it gives so much history and context and backstory. And I don't think I put that on the links page, but I will. And then Aileen Miracle has um, some fun worksheet backup things um, where they can sort of draw as they're listening if you just wanted them to listen and go through. Um, so it's like active listening, like um, as they're listening, they're coloring in. Um, Corey Bloom also has some cool listening worksheets. But um, I found, so this, this DVD has Peter and the Wolf and Colonel of the Animals. Um, on it, so I leave this with that in case the sub wants to, you know, use the the CD version. But you can pull any CD version you want um, or anything like that. Let's see. Oh, and then there's also a um, Bugs Bunny version of Carnival of the Animals that leads them through all of them. So you can put that's on YouTube. I'm pretty sure, but you can put links to that if you want. So for a lesson, I'll have sort of all that smushed together. I'll have Sarah um, Sarah Bybee's uh, PowerPoint as sort of a preview, and then I'll have them watch the Bugs Bunny. And then if there's time afterwards, I'll have them color and listen on alien stuff. And, and using all of that in tandem, it gives you a really great lesson. Okay, I don't know where my physical copy of Zin 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 Violin is, but I shared about that. It was on the Reading Rainbow DVD, but um, there's also these fun companion worksheets. These are from Pitch Publications on Teachers Pay Teachers, Shelley Tomich. And it goes through and talks about each um, instrument, if you've ever read Zin Zin, Viola, Zin Zin Zin, a violin. And then she has some fun worksheets that I have as backups here, so instrument matching, um, more coloring for kids, but, oh, where's my copy? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> um, this is another great book, and like I said, you could leave it as Reading Rainbow for the younger kids. You could have the, the book here for the older kids, but um, her worksheets as like a companion for this are really great because then the sub can, let's set this down, the sub can show off um, some of the, the backstory stuff, like the instruments and the groupings and things, and give a little bit more context, more than just like, let me read this book and be done. Like it, this gives them more things to work with and the worksheets are a great follow-up. Okay, second grade. So those are like a whole slew of things, right? Like you could do this, or you could do this, or you could do this, or I found this book and then I found this worksheet on teacher pay teachers, or I found this one thing and then I'm gonna add this other thing. That's basically how all my sub plans work. And then I always have a backup of, and if all else fails, they can do coloring. And if all else fails, there's this other thing. And if all else fails, there's this, there's this option because things seem to always fail for subs. So it's good to have if all else fails backup plans because probably they'll need them. Okay, so let me, let me do three, four, and five really quick and go through, let's see. So again, I like using books and I like using them even for three, four, and five. So some books that I would use for three and four, um, John Lithgow, um, I talked about him earlier, The Remarkable Farkle McBride. This is a fun book about a kid who wants to play an instrument and then decides he doesn't want to play it and so he throws it out. And then, um, yeah, I want to play this. Oh yeah, I don't want to play this. I want to play it. Yeah, I don't want to play this. And so um, let's see my favorite image here. Oh yeah, so like he doesn't want to play the flute so he throws it in the lake. Or, oh here it is, let's see. Yeah, he doesn't want to play the trombone so he throws it in the trash. So this is a fun book and the cool thing is there is a DV or a CD of John Lefko reading it. So you can have the original author read the book while the sub just flips through the pages. And then there's a follow-up set of worksheets that I downloaded, again, from Shelley Tomich at Pudge Publications. I think she has a whole line of them called, like, um, sub-tub stuffers, and I, I love them. Anyway, so, again, matching, and um, there's um, coloring as, like, a backup. And then there's another worksheet that says, like, there's coloring, choose your favorite. And then it says, if I change my mind about which instrument I wanted to play, I wouldn't trash it. Instead, I would. And so there's a little bit of writing in there that I think was really great. Let's see. 
Um, okay, so there's all that stuff. There's for Remarkable Sparkle McBride. Uh, the Farewell Symphony is a little, it's a little long um, and maybe a little slow for kids, but um, I have left this before and it actually went over pretty well. So um, I um, put this in there and then I think I got a set of follow-up worksheets from Lindsay Jervis. She has a whole set of like um, li children's literature worksheets and things. Another fun one is by Lemony Snicket, The Composer is Dead. That's a really great one. And again, int introducing kids to the instruments of the orchestra. So that's a super great one. Again, um, with Lemony Snicket actually reading the book, which is fun. Let's see on Instagram. What my school expects the sub to teach what I teach and they don't know music. It's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> so I always leave music themed things and give them options of what they can do. Oh, here are the fun backup worksheets for Farewell Symphony from Lindsay Jervis. Um, really good stuff. Okay. Those are follow up worksheets and things you can put in there. Fourth and fifth grade, I get into more um, what, so like more of um, comparing and contrasting and trying and doing. And, and so a lot of more of examples of things. Let's see if I have um, my school district bought, yeah, here it is, Making Music, um, the textbook series. And so um, the, along with that comes new activities for the substitute teacher. Another book, sort of like the one I shared earlier, um, a lot of worksheets, a lot of um, like evaluating music or contra comparing contrasting two different kinds or trying to catch themes in music or listening to ballads and trying to get the story and all of that. And so I love these for a couple reasons. One, it's free and the district bought it. So like if a lesson flops, they'll be like, well, you bought the curriculum. Um, but, but what I really like um, is that it leaves sub plans the way a sub expects to see sub plans. So if a substitute teacher goes into like second grade, they're used to looking at this and seeing like the standards and then the back, background, teaching strategies, vocabulary words, and different ways to differentiate the activity. They are used to seeing this exact thing from the textbook series. And so I love using these because they, even if they're like, I'm not a music person, this gives them all the exact same things that they are already seeing. And so they know how to read this and extrapolate, if that makes sense. So there are a lot of fun lessons in here, like we did like Deep in the Heart of Texas, or um, a lot of times we'll use the patriotic songs, like 50 Nifty United States, God Bless the USA, America, America the Beautiful. Pair those with some books and you've got some really stellar lessons. Um, Lindsay says, do you get assistance with funding for all the literature you have for your room? Ha! No, I don't have a budget. So um, I buy things either when I see that they're cheap on Amazon or um, I get gift cards from people and use those on Amazon, like for Christmas or whatever, or my school exchange or whatever. Or um, whenever the book fair comes through, the librarian uh, makes sure that I get a free book out of it or a discount book or whatever, so I use that. Or um, go to betterworldbooks.com or thriftbooks.com or abebooks.com. You can buy like library disc cards that you can use in your classroom. So for any of these things and I'm like, here's this lesson based on a book. You don't have to buy the brand new book, especially if you're going to leave it for a sub. Give them give them an old ratty book that, that has been through um, some things, and, and they're going to try those. Uh, so again, um, there's some really fun lessons like this one. The kid's going to make a fortune teller. You know, those little, like, um, we call them cootie catchers, the little, like, you know, like the little paper things. Um, Aileen Miracle in her uh, substitute teacher lesson pack. Um, has this really fun lesson on how to make a, a a fortune teller with musical objectives inside. That's super cool. Um, my kids, when we're t learning the note neighborhood, um, we there's a set of worksheets that go along with that that I made because, you know, when we were, when I was making the note neighborhood, I was like, well, I want a way to assess them. So I have a whole set of worksheets that go along with that um, because they already are learning like note value and they're learning how notes go together. So there's like composition or note reading, things like that, that they can then take and add, um, more. The sub can sort of say like, and, and the, for each of the note neighborhood ones, there's like a PowerPoint that goes with it that explains the lesson. So even if the sub doesn't know anything about note value, they can click through the PowerPoint and, and it basically, it talks right to the kids, but, um, it gives them that information so that they're not like, Hmm, I don't know how to, read music. So then they're actually spending time, the kids are actually spending time composing and arranging. I think fifth grade is especially hard for me. So here's some things that, um, fifth grade, like I lean into that, um, the, the book that the district gave me 
the new activities for substitute teacher because this has really great um, this has really great stuff for fifth grade with the comparing and the contrasting and the critical thinking and the ex, you know, extra worksheets and it comes with a CD so if they're ever going to listen to music they can actually listen to it here so that's nice and that's sort of given to you that's given to me by the district so I, I lean into that um, I like using um, let's see I a couple years ago was teaching about the trouble clef and stumbled onto EGBDF stories so EGBDF for the lines of the trouble clef but each um, when we do that, the kids get to come up with their own E, G, B, D, and F stories. And so what they're going to do is they're going to make a little sentence um, instead of just every good boy does fine, which all your piano kids will do. Um, let the kids come up with a new story um, with those letters. And so I have a place for them to draw a picture and make a story. They can work in pairs or trios. Um, but in this kit, there are like all these little resources you can have. So one of the things that I made for kids was... Um, because kids will get to like every get, and I'm like, why every? What other word can you put there? And they don't, they're like, I don't know. So I have a whole list of all verbs that are E, G, B, D, and F verbs. So explode, giggle, beckon, develop, float, flitter, all sorts of things. Nouns, E, G, B, D, and F nouns. It's like a word bank for kids to pull from. Eagles, girls, balls, baggage, dishwasher, flag, flute, football, and then descriptive words. So instead of every good boy, you could be like, why not effortless green baboons delete fire? I don't know. Like, they, But the word bank helps them be a little more interesting. So what, what I have my kids do then is they, they can use that word bank. They can use the words on their own. Um, they come up with their own story. And then they have to add a picture and a little story. So I have an example here that the sub can read or show to kids. And the example is electric gorillas beat down flowers. And so there's a picture and then the full story. I've got another example here about elderly grandma's baked delicious food, but it's like an example for kids. So then what's really fun when I'm done, you can either put on a bulletin board, you can have the kids keep them. I want, if they're good, we bind them up and then I give a copy to each homeroom teacher and put one in the library. So the last class that did this, enchanted goldfish bake donuts fantastically. Evil green beans bake that, okay, that's maybe two words. Evil green beans bake destructive fries. Edgy grandpa's briefly dry fruit. I mean, you never know. So it's fun and it's um, related to the content and it's um, easy for kiddos to do. But especially because I put in the word bank, because I put in my example, because I gave a little outline of how teachers might teach that. Um, I make that a little bit of an easier activity for those people. What was the PowerPoint? Um, the note neighborhood is what I was talking about. And I'll put that in the links. If you click the link in profile, you'll be able to find that. This is an, another couple things if you're uh, very brave. Okay, so it, this one's not so brave. Instrument bingo, it's like a, just a class favorite. And so I make sure they're um, all of the conductor cards which show the, the sub what sound is playing. It comes with sounds for the kids to listen to. And then each kid gets their own card. Well, um, I also make sure that I add like a bag of counters so that they can actually cover up the the things one year I left instrument bingo and forgot to leave counters so the sub was like well we would have done bingo but like there was no way to get, like we're supposed to cover up or punch out or I, was, I don't know so like okay right so I gotta leave counters and then I have then one year I left it and they're like but there was no prize all oh, right uh so instead of like leaving candy for the sub to give out <clears throat> or some other prize like that because I don't I don't know if I trust the sub to give out that or what if some kid like I don't know, is allergic. I don't want the subject to have to deal with food or anything like that. So my rule is if you win instrument bingo, you can sit anywhere you want in the room. The teacher chair, the piano bench, the comfy chair, the rolly chair, I don't care. And the next person who wins, they can sit anywhere they want, even if it is already occupied. So if somebody else, some other student chose to sit on the piano bench, they can kick that kid off and they can sit on the piano bench. Oh my gosh, how exciting. It's just a silly thing, but like kids... For some reason really like that okay <laughs> a couple more if you're very courageous my kids are able to do this probably because i've been there long enough and we've talked about instrument care um i have a whole set of task cards for instrument exploration so there's non-pitch percussion i have a whole extra set for pitch percussion um or if instruments so they can go through with an instrument or two and explore a little bit that's super fun i also have a set of those 
for ukulele. For so if you want kit, you know, if you put if you've done centers, you can pull some of those resources and have kids do these in centers instead of the whole class. But um, ukulele task cards along with a deck of chords. <laughs> So, so like the, the, the chords they get to play. So um, I've shared about those on Instagram. You can go and check out that story if you want. But um, again, it's just giving kids more musical things to do. Um, and so they have options for instruments. Let me quick do my backup DVDs for this grade because I'm almost out of time. So for three, four, and five, um, my backup DVDs, one of them is these, this whole series of Beethoven Lives Upstairs. I remember watching this when I was in elementary school. But I... It's a little bit hokey, but the kids think it's interesting, especially for third grade or fourth grade. And there's a whole set of these Beethoven, Bach, Haydn, whatever, and it like gives a little bit of a history to that person and like gives a narrative about it. Um, stomp, any sort of stomp videos are great. So I've got Stomp Out Loud, I've got Stomp Live. The kids like watching these. Um, Anna Music, I don't use very often, but it was given and it's interesting electronic i think it'd be really really cool when it came out in 2005 but kids still like watching <laughs> and then one of my ultimate favorites is this one blast it was on the west end uh, broadway maybe broadway but it's basically like if you took like a marching band and color guard and winter guard and just shoved them on a stage and it's super cool interesting um dvd okay i'm gonna say goodbye to instagram and i'm gonna finish up with facebook here thanks everyone for instagram bye so there are a lot of cool DVDs that you can leave for them instead of just like, you know, um, instead of just like, let's watch Enchanted. No, let's not watch Enchanted. Let's like, these are all really cool. So Stomp, um, you can find those online or you can, a lot of people have them or, or you know, if, as teachers are retiring, so you're like, hey, what backup DVDs do you have? And you can get a lot of those. Um, Anna Music, I don't know if you'd, it's, it's an okay resource. It, please leave your comments about Anna Music if you've used that before. But the Beethoven Lives Upstairs, those ser this series of things um, from the children's group, that's good. You can find those online at childrensgroup.com or I'm sure it's on Amazon. Um, and then Blast is a really, really fun one. Um, again, this is a PBS recording. And this one is, uh, how long is it? Approximately 115 minutes. But it is like separated into vignettes. So like there's like a 10 minute segment and a 15 minute segment. So if you have like 10 minutes at the end of your class you want to put in there, you can totally do that. Okay, I hope this has given you some ideas about what to put in, the, in your sub plans. And no way is this definitive. And if some people are like, he's got a lot of stuff. Well, yeah, I've been collecting it for years and years and years. So um take a couple things, try them out, or um, just start collecting. And like I said, the sub tub is there. So like if I get an idea, I put it in the tub. And if I get, you know, um, if I get resources or I have leftover things, I'll just put them in there so that I can use them the next time. Because you just never know when you're going to need them. Um, and, and like I said, I leave options. I leave DVD. I leave book. I leave coloring. I leave this. I leave that. I leave a game. I leave something more active or something not. Just so that the sub can in their comfort level choose something that they'll be able to do because if you say like i want you to sing these songs for the students maybe they won't i mean maybe who knows what they'll do so um leaving options is really great for subs and leaving options with like a, a checklist of like if you're teaching it here's the way you might start here's what might do next here's what you do next here's what you do next it's helpful for them um, or if you buy like from Teachers Pay Teachers or whatever, it's nice be it's nice to do that for you because then you stress less. But they also usually come with a checklist of like first this, then this, then this, then this. But leave them options. Okay, if you have questions along the way, I'm sure that there are things from the sub tip that I did not put links on the links page. But check out the links page. I've tried to put a lot of things on there. If you have questions, please um shoot me an, a message or or ask or whatever or put leave a comment here and i'll try and get back to them um okay that's a lot of stuff uh i'll cycle back but uh thanks so much everyone have a great night and good luck planning for the next time you have a sub